robots and i'm sure you're wondering uh, the situation with robots and why it is so essential so i'll let you handle it engineer uh, explain the whole idea of robots taking up exercises well robotics is basically the I would say that it's the branch of engineering mm. with computer science that is used to design, construct, and application of robots. Okay. And it's used to do, you can use the robot to do anything at all that you want to do. You can use it to solve a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And I think as a nation, we need a lot of problem solvers. Okay. So let's start with the basics. Are these robots already made that, that come into the country? Or you want to start with that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> they are not already made. We use the Lego Mindstorm education system. They are pieces, bricks. Mm -hmm. And the students or whoever is working with it will have to assemble them. Okay. It has a brain, which is the brick, either the NXT brick or the EV3 brick, which stores all the information and all the programs. So after you've assembled them, according to the design, and according to the task it's supposed to accomplish. So the students put them together, they assemble, they are not already brought from mm. outside the country. Is this part of the normal secondary school course or this is an extra? It's an extra okay. curricular activity, yes. Okay. I'll come back to you uh, <laughs> because you're, you're closer to the student and I want to find out uh, what it does to them, what, what does it help them do, really. Yeah, right. But w I think I'll come back to the problem solving, and you're going to give us a number of problems that these robots could possibly solve. Yes, I'll give you two. Um, let me use the grains. Okay. That's, we have the cocoa beans, we have the shenats, and these are categorizing high-grade grains or beans mm -hmm. and they are categorized in this sense because some of them are bad some of the grains when they are picked stones and other materials get involved so you need to really separate them in order to get the kind of quality that you need and the com the robot can easily do that aspect of the work better than we human beings, because they've been programmed and said that when they see a bad bean, they know that, yes, this is bad. Yeah. Sometimes we it's difficult to know or to differentiate between the bad and the good one. That is one of them. The other one is we normally hear of miners who are trapped underground, and there's the need for a rescue team to go and rescue them. And this is a very dangerous operation. So the robot is designed to be able to go and do that operation. And while they are going, there are some gases that emit from the ground that can be very poisonous. Mm. When a human being like you and you go, I mean, you are going for that mission, you can easily die. But the when the robot is going, it senses the, the gases and sends signals back to the team. Mm. So they know that at this area, we have some poisonous gas emitting from that place. So then if the rear rescue team are going, they know the route that they have to use to okay. rescue. Is this tried and tested? Oh, yes, in other countries, but not here. Okay, because as you're talking, I'm trying to remember a movie, like a robot <laughs> going somewhere <laughs> to sense if there's danger, yeah. how many people are there, and that kind of thing. But to think that, so this has been introduced in schools, is that it? Yeah, it's being introduced to schools, but it's not part of the main curriculum. We're just trying to do that to create awareness of what this robotics can do to the student. Okay. All right. You are closer to the, the, to, to the girls, yeah. at least at every girls. Yeah. Tell me what it does. You are a mentor to them. Yes. Okay. What robotics does to the students is one, it helps them bring whatever theory they learn in the classrooms and to apply them to real life situations. For example, the mathematics they do, the physics they do, all those things are what you need in the robotics to do some calculations, to know which distance to go, to know how to turn, the mm -hmm. number of degrees to turn, to get the exact,
to get onto the exact path you want to okay, go. Okay, so with that, what would the student do? Because uh, they would have to arrange. Are they designing the robot? Are they designing the robot from the beginning, or are they just putting the calculations? How does it work? I want to Thank understand you. this. We have, we have the programmers. Mm -hmm. They work on the programming. Okay. And, then you and if you say the programming, what is the programming? The programming is using the, it, the software. Mm -hmm. Let me put it that way. The software on the laptop. Okay. So they program. Maybe this, this, this robot is to turn left at this point, do this, do that. And then we have the designers. They assemble the pieces. Okay to get the robot okay and then we also have some members of the team who are so meticulous and take into consideration the likely thing that can happen to the robots and if it happens what must be done to solve the situation so in a team we have the programmers we have the designers we have the builders some people will have to design this is how the robot has to look are like. all these people students they are all students wow <laughs> they are all students okay and so it helps them apply the theories they learn in the classroom to real life situations. Mm -hmm. It also builds their self-confidence. It teaches them how to work in teams because we don't work, one person cannot work on this thing. We yeah. work as a team. And so they learn to tolerate each other, accept each other's ideas, and okay. then together. Okay. I'll, I'll play the video that, you know, that we saw before we started this discussion again. If we can do that, and then we'll come back, and I, 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 I still have a few more questions. And there's a competition coming up. We'll talk about it as well. So they want to make every girl proud and gather proud. We'll talk about the competitions now. Um, Engineer Ingwen, how? tell us about these competitions uh, that every girl is now going to be a part of. Well, the competition is actually organized to see how students have been able to apply what they've been taught in class very well mm. to this robotics competition. And... I think there are two types of competition that is going to be okay. done. We have the Autonomous Rescue Mission mm -hmm. Challenge. Yeah. Autonomous Rescue, rescue Challenge. Is it like yeah. the mining situation? Yes, yes. that's like okay. the mining situation where there are a lot of caves that the robots need to try and move along the lines. Mm -hmm. Okay. To be able obstacles. Make there yes, there, there are obstacles yeah. that you need to overcome and get to your final destination. And the other challenge has to do with the sorting out of grains. Okay. Yes. So these are the two main challenges that will be taken on this year. Okay. Yeah. So you are going to Brazil. It means that there was a, a national competition in Ghana before? A point, a point of correction. Okay. This competition has already been done. That was last year in yeah. 2013 in oh. Indonesia. So okay. this year we are preparing for another so let me ask, how well did you do? Because we you wanted to be part well. of the eights. 
we did we well. well. We, we did, did well. We had well. 120 points to score in all, and we had 110 out of 120. Oh, okay. Yes. And then out of the all girls teams, we were the first. Wow. Yes, so we did well. Ghana had three representatives. That's uh, three schools representing Ghana, Bishop Herman, St. Augustine's, and Edward Gale Senior High School. Okay. We did well, and it looks like the, the performance gets better each year. And so this year, we are hoping for a much, much better. Okay, okay. so what did I give you? I mean, after you did so well. <laughs> <laughs> you came home with more robots? No, you don't be giving robots. <laughs> you came with certificates. Yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. Yes. But how well, what kind of background do students need to be able to be involved in this? I mean, must you be a science student, for instance? Thank you. You must, I'll say, you must not be a science student. Okay. But you need to be very good because be very good in science. I'm saying this because everybody does integrated science. You do physics, you do mathematics here and there. So you need not be a science student okay. because in my you just need the general you knowledge just need in the science. General knowledge and have the interest for it. Okay. How long does it take uh, to complete one program? Thank you. We d it depends on the task at hand. Okay. You don't have a specific sum for the challenge you are working on. You've been working for the past two months, okay. and you need to work, keep practicing. My director will tell you it is not prayer, but it is practice. When you're working with these, you need to practice. You make mistakes, you correct them. So sometimes about three months before you get what exactly. You but want. the point is, this is not part of the curriculum. This no. is an extra activity. No. no. So where do you, where do students find that time? to do what they expected to do in school and then do this extra activity. Thank you very much. Well, in a Brigel Senior High School, we have days that we do co-curricular activities. That's club meeting days. So we use the club meeting days, which okay. is one hour for it. And if there are upcoming events, we do make time okay. outside classes hours mm. to prepare for the completion. Okay. Engineer, what would it do to a student, I mean, ultimately, because you're encouraging, are you encouraging, you're obviously encouraging students to take part in this? Yes. Ultimately, like you said, it promotes teamwork amongst them. Mm. And again, it, their confidence levels go high. They learn to be innovators. And I, like I said from the beginning, it also helps you to solve problems. And also, gives you the opportunity to meet world scientists or world innovators. So those are some of the few benefits that the okay. students get. Okay. Yeah. And you, 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 I think you, you told me that you s this thing was started in Ghana in 2011. Yes. yes. Okay, so 2011, 2014, how yeah. far have we come? I would say that we've come very far because we've been to two world competitions. The first one was in... Malaysia, which Archbishop Porter Guest and St. Augustine's represented us. Okay. And the following year, Ibri Guest, St. Augustine's and Bishop Emma also, and it keeps on improving. And we believe that this year, we hope to go and bring the trophy mm -hmm. to Ghana. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you, I mean, <laughs> apart from taking part in the broader competition, right. are you able to use the robots to solve problems in school? Yeah, we should be able to use the robot to solve problems. Because I remember going to a school and one of the kids asked me, so can I use the robot to, can I program the robot that it can sweep? <laughs> it can wash my dishes so that ah, when I wake up. That's a up lazy school <laughs> kid. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, yes, <laughs> you should be able to do that. So you can program the, the robot to brush your teeth and stuff like that? If you want to. Really? <laughs> available to everybody and anybody how can somebody get a hold on on this yes the Ghana Robotic Foundation Academy has some of the kits or you can also go to Legoland and buy them yourself okay yeah and that is everything that you need to design yes and then okay. the software for the EV3 the software is actually free it's on the net so when you buy the kits, you just download it so they use it for your programming. So you, you're talking internet and yeah. you're talking buying. Mm -hmm. Does it mean this is uh, designed for a, cat a certain category of people? 
No, I don't want to believe so because internet is now almost everywhere on our phones and in our schools we do have. Yeah, there are some schools mm -hmm. who don't have computers. <laughs> I think the Ghana Robotic Foundation is trying as much as possible. I think they've been able to give some schools some of these kits to use for their practice. Okay. And I know some of them have stayed with the schools for over a year. So they are doing very well mm. in that aspect. I think the U.S. Embassy is also helping and the Danish embassy as well, mm. giving us the kits. Okay, yeah. so w what's the plan for the foundation? You identify certain schools and then you give them the kits. Do you give them somebody, you know, uh, like Lavina to train them or help coach them? Yes, we are trying to encourage all schools, not that we're trying to be very selective. We try to come to the school, talk to you. If you have the interest for it, then we try and set that. Then we're trying to get you a coach or get one of your IT teachers to come for a training, then who can then come and teach. But from time to time, there are coaches that go around to assist students. Okay. So is this, uh, is Lavina the foundation's coach or this is an IT person that you trained? Lavina is... <laughs> 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 you are everything. Well, let me, let me first say that the Ghana Robotics Academy Foundation is a non-profit volunteering organization. Okay, non-profit and then volunteering. Yes. Okay. Volunteering, it's like you're not being paid for. You need to have love. You need to volunteer. So okay. I am working with a school, every girl's, but... What's your background? Mathematics. Okay. Mathematics. And then you, you decided that you were interested in it, so you went for the training. What happened, <laughs> what happened was I actually had to send the students for one of your zonal competitions by then I had no idea about it. I okay. had to take them there. And when I sent them there, I got interested in what they were doing. So after a while, I decided to join them and help with the training. Okay. So since I was with the big girls, I had to be with the big girls. But from time to time, we do go to other schools to train them. Okay. So this year, because we have a competition this year, yeah. uh, wh which schools are in this particular competition? That would be very difficult for me to tell the schools because schools have to register oh, okay. to participate. It means so that the process is now beginning. I think because of Saturday. Can I? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. The competitions, we have the zonal competitions, mm -hmm. okay? That is RISE. And then we have the World Robots Olympiad. Now, for the RISE, they are all annual competitions, though. The RISE comes on on Friday. That's for the northern and upper regions of Ghana. You're talking this Friday? Yeah. Oh, yes. This so there's Friday. a competition yes, this Friday? Yes, this Friday. And then on Saturday, where the Greater Accra, Eastern Region, Bongahafo, Ashanti Region schools will be competing in Accra okay. at the Richard School. And then the following week, which is on the 4th of October, we'll have another competition in Cape Coast okay. for the Western schools, the Central Region schools. And this competition involves the junior, the primary school, the junior high school, and the senior high school categories. Okay. Yes. So you bring this, all the winners together, and then? We'll yes. The so what, what happens is that the winners of the zonal, the various zonal competitions mm -hmm. will now prepare, will now be trained, depending on their interest, for the World Robot Olympiad. Okay. Yes, and they would have to register. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what are some of the activities? Or it still has to do with you know the mining example and then the cocoa example. Yes. Do, do you have themes for them? Are they all doing the same thing? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, they are all doing the same, competing for the same challenge. Okay. So we have the autonomous rescue challenge, and then we have the multi-grain color sorter. Okay. Challenge. So it's how you do it. That's how the you difference. Do it. And then they are all to work within a specific time. That's one twenty seconds. One twenty seconds. Yes. Yeah. One twenty seconds. Okay. So you should be able to work within one twenty seconds. So at the end of the day, the winner is the robot that was able to accomplish the task within the shortest possible time. Oh. Yes. Nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So wh where's the Friday destination if people are interested? Because you mentioned nothing. UDS. 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 Okay. UDS. And the time is? And the time is 8.30 a.m. Okay. At UDS. All right. Uh, unless there's something else you want to say, I want to mm -hmm. say thank you. Um, we want to use this, your me use this medium 
to appeal to the industries to get involved in this because at the end of the day, they are going to be the beneficiary of this project that we are doing. Training students to come up with solving problems. So we want to just urge them that they should come support us to be able to groom up our future leaders who will come and solve all our problems for us in this country. Can I say amen to that? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say something? Right. Yeah. yeah, sure. Right. Quickly, though. Okay. I want to say a big thank you to Dr. Ashite, who is the founder of the Ghana Robotics Academy Foundation, and then to the U.S. Embassy, who has been a backbone, a good one, of course, to the, since the initiative began. We also want to say thank you to Dr. Yao Kriku Yuenchi, who is one of the founding members, and then the director of RISE. Then to our trainers, Michael Wilson, and then Asabia, who is the coordinator, and anyone who is involved with RISE and GRAF. Okay, thank you, Lavina. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, engineer, engineer Joseph William Angwa. He's an electrical engineer, um, so involved in this uh, robotic mission, if you ask me. <laughs> um, Lavina also airs with Ebru Girls Senior High School. Thank you very much thank you. Uh, for thank being you. 